<laughs> Welcome to Milk and Cookies, Conversations Off the Court with Humboldt Creamery, and we're joined by Jim Barnett, Warriors broadcaster and a man who has been a part of this organization for so many decades, bringing so many fans so much joy and education. And today, we're going to learn about you, where you came from, and how all of your various stops have informed your knowledge of basketball and what you share with our fans. And let's go back to Riverside. And let's go back to your childhood. And, and when you found basketball, when was that? And what brought you to the game? Well, it's interesting. Uh, first of all, my dad was in the Air Force. And I lived in many different places as a youngster. I remember my dad had a basket uh, out in the back field in these apartments we lived at in Georgia. When I was six years old, I think I had a basketball goal set up. And a lot of kids in the neighborhood. And those were the days where we, we played all day long in the summertime. We played baseball. Baseball was my first love. I loved sports. Uh, my dad liked sports, so I loved sports. When we moved to California, I was 10, so I started playing on a YMCA basketball team. And I, I, I loved to play. I, I loved to play basketball. I loved to play football. So I went on and I played in junior high uh, basketball. I was just kind of average. So then I went to high school, and that's what changed everything in Riverside, California, Ramona High. As a sophomore, I was on the B basketball team. That was my first year of high school. I was 5'9", 124 pounds. I averaged about six points a game. And my goal, my goal at that time was to play junior varsity as a junior and then sit on the bench my senior year wearing that blue and white uniform. If I could just make the team and sit on the bench, that was my goal. But I had a coach, his name was Tom Williams, and he changed my life. And he saw something in me that I didn't see. He encouraged me. He, I remember that sophomore year he told me in the springtime, if you don't get any confidence in yourself, you'll never go anywhere. And he said, I'm expecting you to be first string next year on the varsity team. As, as our training camp went on for about a month, we scrimmaged every day and he kept score. And he said, I'm gonna, the top five point getters after all these scrimmages are gonna be starters. And so after the first week, I think I was number nine. So I thought, this is encouraging. I can, I can make this team. And then after two weeks, I was number seven, and then I was number six. And finally, at the end of four weeks, I ended up number four, so I was a starter. And um, I still was not any terrific offensive player, but I was hell on defense. I was really quick, and so I took all the top scorers in the league and wouldn't let them catch the ball. You know, it's amazing to think that you're just trying to make yeah. the high school team, but then just what would be several years later, you're playing for the Boston Celtics. And we'll get to that in a second because on the way, as you head north from Southern California to Eugene, Oregon, where you went to school as an Oregon duck, uh, you could stop in Humboldt and pick up some of the milk. And, and I'm digging in here for some milk and cookies as we hit the okay. topic of college. And, oh, and, and, uh, and, and, and cheers to uh, you and the Oregon Ducks and the success that uh, you had then and you've seen the Ducks program have over the years. Yeah. But, but the time at Oregon, what, what did it mean to you to help get you to the NBA? Well, I was uh, recruited by a lot of colleges, UCLA, USC, Cal, Stanford, all of those. I went to the University of Oregon. And uh, I, got, I got very good very quickly. And uh, I didn't know if I, how I would be. I was afraid to go to UCLA. I didn't know if I was that good. And, um, but I really worked hard. I, that's all I did was play basketball. I, I slept with a basketball in high school. When, when Tom Williams got me on that program, I, nothing else mattered except, you know, my schoolwork, obviously, and my grades, I was going to go to college, and basketball. I was really single-minded in purpose and very, very focused on that. And no, nothing distracted me from that. And so that's all I did. I, I breathed it, I slept it, lived it. You're a rookie. You're in Boston. You walk in the door. This is Mecca. I mean, this is like, this is the thing in the NBA at that yeah. time. They had won eight straight championships. What was it for you to walk in the door then at that time? I was uh, frightened. Um, first of all, you didn't get guaranteed contracts. Um, I think I was probably the lowest paid number one draft pick in the league that year because our back was very, very cheap. <laughs> and, and he looked at you and thought it was a privilege to come here and we're doing you a big favor. There were only 10 teams in the league. I was the eighth pick overall. My work ethic was, you know, always at 100%. And so that was a very veteran team. Uh, Bill Russell, player coach, the first African-American 
coach in professional sports anywhere. Uh, it was terrific. So I got to play for him. Bill Russell came up to me in the early 90s, and the Warriors were in the playoffs, Chris Mullen days, playing the Lakers. And he, I hadn't seen him in years, and he came in and asked me, he started chatting, and he said, how's Sandy? That was my wife. Wow. And I said, well, she's fine, Bill. How, how could you remember her name you know, 25, 30 years later? He said, Jim, you were a Celtic. There aren't many Celtics around. He made me feel like a million bucks. Uh, that's, that's who, that's, and whenever I see him that, he still asks the same question. And we have a very similar feel around the Warriors organization yes. right now where it's that personal and it feels this important to be part of this moment. Yes. When, when you think of it, when you look at your playing days with the Warriors and all that you've seen and where we are now, kind of help us understand what it's meant to you. It's, it's a very different league today, but there are similar qualities um, although a little more gentle and compassionate, uh, today's world with the ownership, the general manager, the coach, but the Warriors are very blessed. And I, I can't, I speak from the heart when I talk about this regime that the Warriors have right now, from Joe Lacob and Peter Guber, the ownership, and Bob Myers and the integrity and the kind of person he is. And then you go to Steve Kerr, who's directly in touch with the Warrior players every day. You're not going to meet finer men. And then this team is really blessed to have Stephen Curry as their leader and the kind of individual he is. Um, you, you, they just have something that I've never seen before. You know, besides their talent on the floor. See, as I get older, I see other things, and other things mean more to me than just wins and losses. They, they put everything in perspective. Sure, they want to win, but if they lose, they're respectful of the other team. Um, they want to win championships, but I don't know, the ultimate goal is to, to be a better person, to be a better person, to be a better player, to be a better franchise. Uh, they have everything in perspective. It's, it's pretty special, and I'm really fortunate and very grateful, grateful to be a part of it, to be just a small part of it. If they win the championship, I'm happy for them. I really am because they are deserving individuals. Jim, you are the absolute best. Everyone in the organization knows it, all the fans know it, and thank you so much for your time and joining us here for Milk and Cookies, conversations off the court with Humboldt Creamery. Yeah. Great stuff, my man. <laughs>